Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 14. One of the diagnostics in plasma physics is the Langmuir probe, also known as an electrostatic probe. It's one of the simplest and most useful diagnostics because it consists of a metal wire placed in a plasma and a measurement is carried out of the current and voltage characteristics of that plasma. Imagine we have a metal chamber with a plasma generated inside it. We insert in this metal chamber a very small wire called a Langmuir probe. We attach the probe to a power supply which applies a voltage between the probe and the body of the chamber. Amongst other things, the Langmuir probe enables the plasma temperature and electron and ion densities to be measured. Here is a plot of the applied voltage from the power supply and the measured current flowing through the probe. As you can see, it's a highly nonlinear curve. There are some notable characteristics of this curve. This region is called the ion saturation region. It allows the density of the ions to be determined. And if we're dealing with a quasi-neutral plasma, then it's really the plasma density that's being determined. This point here, where the curve crosses the x-axis, is called the floating potential. That is, both electron and ion currents to the probe are equal, so no net current is registered. All it means is that if we place an isolated object in this plasma, then it will reach the floating potential. This part of the curve is known as the plasma potential, which is just before the electron saturation current region, which enables the electron density to be determined. Again, if we're dealing with a quasi-neutral plasma, then the electron density is the density of the plasma. Let's now look at the electron saturation region of the IV curve. So imagine we have our plasma, then we insert a Langmuir probe, which is, as you can see, just the tip of a wire, and place a very large voltage on it with respect to the chamber walls. As a result, electrons are attracted to the probe, and they form a negative space charge region around the probe, which is a negative sheath. Let's now look at the iron saturation region, where we place the probe tip in the plasma and apply a large negative voltage. Naturally, the ions are attracted to it and form a positive space charge region, which is also a positive sheath. Now, let's obtain the iron density of the plasma from the iron saturation current. The expression for current density is given by this, J equals I on A where J is the ion current density, I is the ion current, and A is the surface area of the probe. It's actually the ion collection area of the probe, which is usually slightly larger than the probe surface area. But for our purposes, we'll just take it as the surface area of the probe. We can write the current density in this expression as we've seen before, where NS is the ion density at the sheath edge and UB is the Bohm speed, which we've seen before as being this expression. If we now substitute the expression for the Bohm speed, we can now write the iron current as follows. Note that we need the density in the main body of the plasma rather than the sheath edge. This expression for current only includes the density at the sheath edge. To obtain this, we use the Boltzmann relation given by this where phi s is the potential at the sheath edge, and n naught is the plasma density that we want. The potential at the sheath edge is equated to the thermal energy in the plasma, given by this expression. Substituting this expression in the Boltzmann relation gives the following. You'll notice that the density ns at the sheath edge is 0.61 the density in the main body of the plasma, n naught. Although we can leave the relationship as this, that is 0.61 multiplying n naught, it's not really very convenient. But we'll also note that there is an element of arbitrariness in defining the sheath edge. So quite often we round down this figure of 0.61 as 0.5. The iron current density now becomes the following expression, where ns has been replaced by 0.5 times n naught. Although it appears that if we measure the iron current, we can obtain the plasma density, n naught, but we don't know the electron temperature yet. 
So we need to obtain the electron temperature. To measure the electron temperature, let's recall the diagram that we've shown previously. You'll notice there is an extra component of two resistors in the plasma with voltages Vp and Vs across them. There are actually no resistors in the plasma, but the plasma does behave like a resistance. We've included these to show that the plasma forms a circuit with the outside power supply and the probe. Vp is the voltage between the probe tip and the plasma. Vs is the voltage between the plasma and the walls of the chamber, known as the plasma potential, or sometimes called space potential. Note that this forms a complete circuit. From one of Kirchhoff's rules of circuits, the voltages around a circuit must add up to a total of zero. This gives us that the voltage V across the power supply must equal Vp plus Vs. We'll need this later to find out the plasma density as determined from the electron saturation current. First, let's obtain the electron temperature. For simplicity, we assume that the probe tip is planar. That is, the electron drift speed travels along one dimension that we've taken here to be the x-axis. The electron current density on the probe tip is given by this expression, where as you'll notice, the velocity component Vx has been explicitly included because it is a one-dimensional problem. F is the distribution function that we'll take to be the Maxwellian distribution, and Vt is the speed of the electrons that reach the probe tip. Now it may not be evident as to why we write the current density equation in this form if we're not familiar with the meaning of the distribution function. This will be covered in the kinetic theory part of the course. The energy of these electrons have to overcome the potential difference Vp. So we find that the kinetic energy of the electrons reaching the probe tip is given by this expression. Substituting the expression for Vt and carrying out the integral, we finally obtain an expression for the electron current given by this, where the average electron speed Ve has been defined in previous lectures. We then obtain the electron temperature from the IV curve by taking the natural logarithm of both sides. Let's look at the IV curve once again. We can obtain the electron temperature by using this equation and, as you can see, the electron temperature can be taken from the slope of this line, but it has to be in this region of the IV curve, between the floating and plasma potentials. Let's now use the expression for the voltage V in terms of Vp and Vs that we obtained earlier in the equation for the electron current. The equation changes to this form. Now let's assume that we are at the electron saturation current, which starts when V equals Vs. The electron temperature now reduces to this expression. So, as you can see, if we know the electron saturation current, we can actually determine the plasma density n naught.